We are four months away now from decision. 2020 President Donald Trump versus Joe Biden for the president and all the other Senate races going on around the Southland. Hello, I'm John Rawl. This is the show that we talk about all things Southern politics, and this is y'all. And we're going to do things a little bit different. We've got a lot of chaos going on across the country in terms of what happened with George Floyd, and that's kind of evolved into a lot of other things, some out of uh, something you couldn't imagine just a few months ago that have happened here in the Southland and around the nation. And we're going to talk about it all right now. we got a very special guest, a guy, a guy that's been getting his Southern passport stamped. He's a native of Brownsville, Tennessee. He spent time in South Carolina. He now calls the Commonwealth of Virginia home. And right now, he's calling the Y'all Show home. Vince Everett Ellison is our special guest, and he's on right now to talk about his brand new book, The Iron Triangle, Inside the Liberal Democrat Plan to Use Race to Divide Christians and America in Their Quest for Power and How We Can Defeat Them. And Vince is on the Y'all Show right now. Hello, Vince. John, how are you today? Happy to be with you. It's an honor. Well, thank you very much, and congratulations on this new book. We're excited about you. You, in fact, ran for Congress roughly 20 years ago in South Carolina against the legendary James Clyburn. We'll talk about your political career and more and what you got going on right now, but welcome in to the Y'all Show. It sounds like you're a y'all kind of guy. Oh, yeah, man. I'm with you. I mean, Brownsville, West Tennessee, that's that's my stomping ground. Uh, my, my, my family is still there. Uh, I have extended family from my grandmother and my grandfather. My great-grandparents were there. I mean, Tennessee is where the Ellisons and the Bonses and the Carrolls, where we all live. All right. Now, I got to ask you, obviously, it, it looks like you're a black guy there. And I I live, guess. I've lived in West Tennessee, and I think there's something really special happens this time of year. You mentioned all your family there. There's something called the Black Family Reunion that happens this time of year. So do you go back and do you have cousins and all those people come in from all over the country to attend these family reunions? Oh, yes. And it is a festive affair. Uh, the last, we, we have them like every two years. We had one last year. I wasn't able to attend. But we, we, we have a family reunion in Jackson, Tennessee. We go to the Deliverance House of Prayer. That's where my cousin, Nathaniel Bond, is a pastor there. Uh, it's one of the biggest black churches in Jackson, Tennessee. And most of my relatives go there. And uh, if the people want to have a good time and go and praise the Lord, Deliverance House of Prayer is where my dad, my uh, uh, my siblings, my cousins, all of the Bonses, Carols, Ellisons, we go out there and we have a great time. Yeah, and, and I'm not joking here. A lot of these small towns around the South, a lot doesn't, not necessarily a lot of things go on in the summertime months. And so when these families have their family reunions, it may be the only time all year that the hotels in these towns in places like West Tennessee have a lot of occupancy and I guess it's a good thing y'all didn't plan on having these reunions this year with the pandemic going on and all. But I will tell you, I was not far from Brownsville the other day, and I was driving in the country, and I saw cars lined up all over the place. And I thought, well, it must be a fair going on. And then I saw the smoke coming in the sky. And I think it was one of those family reunions. It looked like they were having a good time. Oh, yeah, man, barbecue. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we God, God is going to work it out. And, uh he, 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 he the, 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 the family is the most important thing in, in the world uh, to us. And I think to most of America, and that's why most of, most of, most of the things I'm seeing in the Democratic Party just worries me and worries me. Mm -hmm. you know, I wrote this book after uh, uh, working in the prison system for five years. And my, my father, uh, we, I was born on the cotton plantation in Haywood County. Um, my dad worked in the insurance industry. Golden Circle Life Insurance Company and pulled us all out of poverty. And uh, we started a singing group there in West Tennessee called the Ellison Family. For 20 years, we sung gospel music. And when I went to the prison system and saw so many young black men being locked up in the 90s, it, it, it concerned me. I asked this question, you know, why was I thought we had overcome? Because my life was pretty good. But I saw that uh, a lot were left behind. And of course, the black intelligentsia started telling me it was this group called they said it was rich white Republicans that were locking up black men. So I resigned my post. Is that right? I decided to start a nonprofit organization just to uh, see what was going on. And I found out that there were no rich white Republicans down there in the black community. I mean, you would see a leprechaun before you saw a rich white Republican down there. But I did see a lot of black Democrats. 
And the ones that I saw were this group I call the Iron Triangle. Uh, they were most black ministers, most black uh, politicians, and most black uh, civic organizers. And they were contracted by the um, by these liberals up in New York City and, and, and California. And their main goal was to make sure that they got 90% of the black people to the polls every year to vote for the Democrat Party. So my book tells about my journey, tells about what I found, and it tells us how us Christians can talk to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are lost over there in the blue area and bring them back home. I think it was after you graduated from Memphis State University that you ended up in South Carolina. I think it was it the prison system that led you to go work in the prison system in the Palmetto State. Is that why? How you yeah, yeah. I got a job at a, at a prison called the uh, Kirkland Correctional Institution. It's a maximum security prison. And uh, my eyes were, were open, man. And I just saw, I saw men that had become animals. I saw them locked up. I saw them warehoused. And I wanted to understand the system that had created such a thing. And as I saw what, the, what, what, what was being done in the black community, there was a cultural genocide happening through the educational system, through law enforcement, through drugs. And I saw that the people who were in charge of the area weren't, weren't trying to stop it. They were actually benefiting from it. Hmm. Uh, their primary goal was to keep the black community exactly where it was. And to show that it's a plan, I, there's a, um, there was a study that came out in the Washington Post on June 4th. They said that since 1968, there hadn't been any narrowing in the wealth gap between black and white citizens. 68, yet they continue the same policies. They say that the schools are more segregated now than they were during Brown versus Board of Education, but they continue the same policies. We have 10 times more black men in prison than we had in the 60s, and they continue the same policies. We are aborting half of our children when in the 1960s, abortion was even part of the black conversation. And Joe Biden says, I'm proud of my record in the black community. They're burning down their neighborhoods. They're rioting. They are tearing down statues and defacing government property. Biden says he's happy and he's proud with it. And black Democrats are running for re-election since they're proud of it. And this is chaos. And they're going to do it to all of America if they get the chance. All right. Well, we're talking about things that you don't often hear, and that's a black Southerner here talking about reality here. And The Iron Triangle is his new book. We're visiting with Vince Everett Ellison here on today's Y'all Show. The book is out, and you can check it out again, available on great online retailers and more. Now, you mentioned black Democrats, and I guess their commander-in-chief at least in the House of Representatives, is Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You challenged him some 20 years ago. You ran for Congress against Clyburn, and he has essentially ran without too much competition since that district was created some 25, 30 years ago. And here's a guy who, again, is the grand poobah of, of the way, if, if you've got to have the black seal of approval in Congress, it's got to be signed off by Jim Clyburn. And, and I think he's part of that problem you're talking about. The, the, the real leaders aren't white Republicans. It's people like Clyburn there in South Carolina. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Jim's district, he's been there 27 years. Sad thing is that his district uh, has, has gone backwards since he's been there. Uh, they're still the poorest, most ill-educated, most crime-ridden districts in, in, the, in all of America. But Jim gets his promotion. Why? Because Jim is doing exactly what he's supposed to do. That's the only reason why you get a promotion, <laughs> is that you do your job well. And what is Jim's job? To make sure that black people vote for the Democratic Party, period. And all of these black Democrats do that job, to keep their people poor, to keep them uneducated so they can do what they're told. Now, this still will take you all the way back to slavery. The Democratic Party has been over uh, the black community since its, its inception in the 1800s. They've always had control. Except for about like four or five years during during Reconstruction, they've had absolute control of the black community, and they've always had this little group of people. I call them the Iron Triangle. But it started with the black minister, and their job was to keep black people under control for the master. Even during Reconstruction, same thing. So when the federal government came down and said you can no longer keep black people from voting, of course, when the Democrats had to recruit black people to run on their ticket, who do you think they were going to get, Malcolm X? <laughs> of course not. They wouldn't have got that old house Negro class that, that uh, they've been working with for the last 200 years and say, okay, now we're going to put you in another position. But your job is the same, to make sure that you keep the black people in line for us. 
and that's what they've been doing. And if you look at the, the condition of the black community, there isn't any good reason why the Democratic Party should be getting 90% of the black vote. They are at the, the black community is at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. They are angry. They are mad all the time about what's going on. But there's an old Valvillian term that says 90% of every gig is showing up. And because conservatives and Republicans do not show up, the black community don't vote for them. But the Democrats will do one thing. That's about all. They will show up. And because they show up, they get 90% of the black vote. And they'll, they'll show up, all right. In fact, I've been in South Carolina just before elections, and I've heard the aforementioned Jim Clyburn on commercials talking about mm. how the local Democratic Party was going to come pick you up and take you to the polls. So they're out there working hard. I don't know if that's legal or not, Vince, but uh, that's, what, uh, that's what they do there. And I'm sure that happens everywhere. Let me, let me ask you this question, if you don't mind. Okay, I am a Christian, and I'm a proud American, and I believe in the separation of church and state. So answer, riddle me this, Vince. How come, the, 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 the fact is, how come you have, I guess, political candidates walk into black churches and speak? How, how, how are they able to get up in front of a congregation and essentially campaign when we're supposed to have this separation of church and state? It may go on in white churches, but I know it goes on in black churches. Yeah, it started in the civil rights movement when the church uh, grafted itself to politics. Okay. Um, and that was a very, very big mistake. It was a terrible mistake. The separation of church and state, uh, the, 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 the founders, it revealed how they were so, so, so genius in separating church and state because the politics... The church did not change politics. Politics changed the black church. Okay. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, during the March on Washington, when he gave his great I Have a Dream speech, um, put a lot of poison pills into the black community. One thing he said in, in that speech was, he said, uh, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. That's not true. Because based upon the concept of how we started this country, freedom is an unalienable right. It cannot be taken away. John Locke said that an unalienable right cannot be taken away. It can't be transferred. It cannot be sold. So you don't go to government for your freedom. Your freedom was given to you by God. He said in that speech, we come to government for our unalienable right. That's not true because God gives you your unalienable rights. Your unalienable rights are the right to defend yourself, life, liberty, and to own property. You don't go to government for that because government is usually the entity trying to take it away. You protect your unalienable rights, and God gave you the right to do it by giving you the right of self-defense. This is taking you back to John Locke and his second treaties of government. Now, when he told the black community that, we started doing nothing but protesting because we started believing that we were supposed to go to government for everything that we wanted. And all the pastors were being led by the example of the pastors in the civil rights movement, King, Abernathy, Jesse Jackson, and they told them it was all right to allow politics in your church. But what happened? The liberals that had grafted themselves to the civil rights movement, the gay rights movement, the feminists, the anarchists, the Marxists, they all then got grafted into the black church. So you had the black preacher trying to preach Christianity, which is conservative, and his politics are liberal. <laughs> what did Jesus say? You cannot have two masters. You will love one and hate the other. The black community chose the other master. And this is why you see the hatred and the envy and the jealousy. Jesus said, forgive, love, don't hold grudges, give forbearance. But instead, they're defacing statues, they're burning buildings, hatred, envy, and fear. They walk around every day talking about how they fear white supremacy. When you and I both know that white supremacy is a myth. White people are not superior to black people. Black people are not superior to white people. They said, well, white people think they're superior. Well, a white man can think he's a leprechaun. That doesn't matter. <laughs> it's what you believe. Sure. It is not whether that is racism. It's how you respond to racism. And when you see black men that think they're so tough and, and so virile walking out there saying they're afraid of white people and white men, and we need police to protect us and the government to protect us from white people, it's an affront to God. You cannot be a Christian and be a victim. I understand. So the black church during the civil rights movement grafted politics into our religion. 
Then now someone it's become an apostate religion, and it doesn't help anybody. I want to ask you. You kind of hinted a moment ago about a lot of these bad characters throughout history were Democrats, especially these white. That maybe when there was white supremacy going on, a lot of, of were Democrats. That's a common thing you're hearing a lot more from the conservative pundits that all these bad people in history were all Democrats. I kind of have to sit there and shake people and say, what happened 50, 100 years ago? There, there's no correlation between Republicans of then, Republicans of now, the Democrats of then, the Democrats of now. So if you're a conservative trying to justify and make the Republican Party some holier-than-thou thing, I'm sorry, that just doesn't, that just does a whole water to me. What do you think of that? What we have with the Democratic Party are certain, a certain party platforms that are undeniable. Okay. Uh, they believe in abortion up to the up, up into the ninth month. Okay. Uh, they used to have in their platform that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. Now they say abortion should be safe, legal, and free. So they want you and I to pay for abortion. And my governor, Ralph Northam, even said that they should be able to do it after the baby is born. He, they got We have him on tape saying it. Uh, they believe in partial birth abortion. That means abortion up to the ninth month, sucking the baby's brains out. Uh, and, and just throwing it in a pan and then selling his body parts. That's what they believe. That's an evil party. The hand of Satan is in that. They believe, well, the, 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 the Republican Party believes in school choice, allowing parents to pull their children out of failing anti-Christian, secular humanist schools, and, uh, and, and saying you can take your money and send your child to the school of your choice. The Democrats are against it. They're against prayer in schools. They're uh, trying to teach transgenderism to young children, telling children at five or six years old that your your gender is fluid, that you can be a girl, you can be a boy, and we'll give a we'll give a, give a fairly funded operation to make you that. They are trying, the Democrats. The reason why, and they and these, and this is really terrible. Black people are saying in these inner cities that they are being hunted by gangs and police. The Democrat Party plan is to disarm them. Disarm them. Hmm. Tell them to give their guns to the police. Why don't you just be expeditious and tell them to blow their own brains out? They say they're being hunted, but you say take their guns so they can be killed. The Democrats are talking about tearing down the border and allowing illegals to come in. Now, where are these illegals going to go? Straight to the black community where the rents are going to go up because there are more, there are more people than there are houses, where the schools are going to be overcrowded, where they're going to be competing for services from the government, and where crime and drugs are going to come with them. So when you start talking and, 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 and when you start talking about religious liberty, where the Democrats are trying to make nuns pay for birth control, trying to force uh, uh, private companies to engage in gay weddings and, 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 and gay marriages, and where they're trying to tell companies that don't believe in abortion that if you do not provide for abortion services, we're going to put you in jail. The Democratic Party is an evil party. When you compare the platforms, now Democrats themselves, the people, are not evil people. But the platforms of this party and the people that run it, the Democratic Party is the longest lasting criminal evil empire in the world today. There has never been a time in their history that they didn't have to legally commit murder. From 1800 to 1860, slavery. They could kill their slaves, they could rape them, they could do anything they wanted to them. From 1860 to 1865, the Civil War, they systematically killed almost a million Americans so they could keep their slaves. From 1865 to 1965, 100 years of Jim Crow, where they could lynch, murder, maim, take property, and they did it for 100 years. And after that, from 1972 up until now, abortion. 60 million babies dead, and they want to expand it. They're responsible for over 100 million American deaths. Not foreigners, Americans. 60 million of them black. This is the Democrat Party. They are a party of darkness. Hmm. And if you want absolute proof of it, go to any place in America where they have absolute rules. And you'll see nothing but death, drugs, decay. They control every crack house, every, every prostitute house, every housing project, every failing school. They control the, 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 the sheriff's departments, the police departments, the mayors, the city councils, the school boards, of every one of these ghettos. They are their utopia. They're proud of it. 
and they are not going to stop it until we make them stop. Wrapping up our conversation with Vince Everett Elson here on today's Y'all Show. His website is irontrianglebook.com. Go there and learn much more information. Also, don't forget that you can follow Vince on Twitter. Vince E. Ellison is the Twitter account. Facebook is Iron Triangle Book on Facebook. And you can, again, catch up with this West Tennessee native and Memphis State alum and also now a Virginia resident, which... My goodness, you mentioned Governor Northam and all the craziness of what's going on in Virginia. If you're a conservative, yeah. you've got your eye on the Commonwealth and thinking, oh, my goodness, I hope those kind of values and what's been going on there in Richmond don't come to the Nashvilles and Montgomery's and Columbia's of the world. Yes, yes, Lord. You're so right. Walking around with a, in blackface with the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> and, uh, uh, and talking about killing babies up to the ninth month and that it's okay. I mean, you know, but that's the Democratic Party, man. That, that that's, that's who they've always been. And it's time for us to wake up and understand who these people are. They played this game a long time. Now the mask is coming off. Look at the riots in the street. Look at the defacing of government property and statues. Look at how they uh, are, are killing and murdering people in the streets of Chicago, L.A., Detroit. These are places that they run and they control. The fact that they told their police officers to lay down their weapon and allow private citizens to be murdered and their, pro and their private property to be taken from them and destroyed. While the mayors and governors of these states told the police to just sit down. If anything good came out of these riots, every argument against the Second Amendment has been obliterated. Why do you need an AK-47? I think you know now. <laughs> Why do you need a, a, a handgun that has a 30 clip magazine in it? I think you know now. Because these liberals will tell the police to lay down their weapons, and they will allow the mob that is their constituents to come in and kill your whole family, and they'll do nothing about it. We saw it in real time. I never thought I'd live to see it. I, I knew it would come in the future, but I never thought I'd live to see the day that a government official in the United States of America would tell the police to stand down and allow their citizens to be murdered and killed and property destroyed by a mob. Mm. Never thought I'd see it. Unfortunately, it's going on, and you can learn a lot more about the madness and how maybe we can all get it fixed by reading The Iron Triangle. Vince Ever Ellison, our very special guest, the book, again, available right now. You can learn more at irontrianglebook.com. Vince, thank you very much, and hopefully you get back to West Tennessee soon and enjoy some good barbecue fried chicken and some good music. You know, I didn't mention Haywood County. Happens to be the the home county of one Tina Turner, so I don't know if you and oh yeah man Tina yeah, yeah. and also my little also my little brother Jonathan is the king of Bill Street uh -huh. down in Memphis uh, down at BB Kings that's uh, right all right John when I when I, when I when I come back down I, I call you up we'll sit down sit down and have some barbecue together yeah sounds good in fact uh, if this political thing doesn't work out it sounds like you got the genetics to maybe be uh, if he's the king of Bill maybe maybe we can do one better for you there Vince. I might go ahead and sing a couple of songs. <laughs> well, I think you're singing a good tune right now with what you're doing in your author career. Vince, thank you very much for coming on today's Y'all Show. Hey, brother, I appreciate it. Anytime. Call uh, me back and I'll be here. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And that will wrap up our conversation. And we'll have more of the Y'all Show right here. Don't y'all go anywhere. <laughs>